Hey everybody, so today we are going to go over how to use your Lansano Breast Pump 3.0. So you guys know that for a long time through my breastfeeding journey that I love the Lansano pumps. I had used the Signature Pro, the Smart Pump, the 2.0, and now we have the 3.0. I'm not breastfeeding anymore, so this will not be a review, but it will be how to use it. So this is everything that came in the box. Now I purchased mine from Walmart, so it might look different if you had an insurance pump, just keep that in mind. This was bought retail from Walmart. So this was the first box that was right on top. They had you pull that out. We'll open that up in just a second. You also have your user manual. You had the tubing. You also have the wall adapter, two extra diaphragms, which is really nice. And then you've got one bottle lid and a nipple. You also have a couple of bottle caps and a couple extra duck valves duckbill valves as well. And then you do have a couple of storage containers along with the membranes and then also the duckbill valves in there as well. So that's the initial setup. And then they also included a freezer bag. And I thought this was actually like a short little bag. And I was like, oh, that'd be really good for like bags of milk. It's not, it's just folded up. So it actually is a pretty full size cooler bag as you can see. So you can fit a full bottle down in there, but it was just folded up really nicely. And I'm actually just gonna fold that back down. So this is the 30 and a half, this is the 28, and this is the 25. Lancino used to include just two sizes, so now we're up to three, that's really awesome. I would love to see even more. A size smaller than the 25 would be really cool. Me personally, when I used Lancino pumps, I was smaller. I was a Medela size 21 millimeter for my flange and the Medela flange at the time did fit this. This looks to be about the same as what I use. So I would imagine it probably does fit still as well. So in case you do need a smaller flange and you have a different size on hand, you could always give it a try. So the pump does look relatively similar to the previous 2.0 versions. It does feel a little bit bulkier, a little bit heavier but I'm assuming for good reason. It does say that it's rechargeable right here on the back. Very cool, I love to hear that. So this is typically where the AA batteries used to go in your pump if you want it to be battery powered, but now they've got a lithium battery in there that is rechargeable, so very cool. But it looks to be about the same. We've got the power port over here. We've got the tubing port right there traditional Lansano with the kind of rubber there to give a nice good seal with the tubing. The buttons all look the same. We've got power, decrease, increase. This is the different frequency that it offers and this is going in and out between stimulation and expression mode buttons. So they kept it relatively the same. Looks like we've got two additional storage bottles here, so that's nice, but that looks to be everything in this container. So for the remainder of the video, we are just gonna focus on this pump. I will go ahead and I will show you how to set this up because even though it does come like this, you are going to have to take this apart. So you'll just wanna unscrew the bottle, not by here, but by up here so you don't damage those gentle little things. And then the lid up here actually twists off. I kind of did it without even thinking about it, but you just twist it to the left, lefty loosey, ready tidy. And then you are able to take all of this apart and you would need to sterilize this before your first use. Obviously your phalanges as well. So you would want to sterilize all this. It's very convenient that it does come assembled, but per recommendations, you'd want to take this apart, wash it with soap and water, and then sterilize it. So I will show you how to reassemble everything as well. Moving forward, we're just gonna focus on the pump. I will show you how to assemble the parts and we'll go over what cycle rates to use and things like that. A couple of things I wanted to mention before I show you how to put things together, we move into the pump, is that they did a great job with this owner's manual. I just flipped through it while I've been just setting things up and I am very impressed. They've got a section on how to size your flange, how to set it up, everything is very detailed in here. I still think this video is important in case you don't have it, 
but I also want to mention some things that I thought were important that I read in here. It does say that if no buttons are touched after 20 seconds, the LCD screen is going to dim and turn off because it's going to save power. Also, if the pump is on for 60 minutes, it's just gonna automatically kick off. If you shortly press the power button and pause your pump session after 20 minutes, it'll also shut off. So those are just things to know and keep in your mind because, you know, anytime a pump kicks off and I skip over reading that in the manual, I think something's wrong, but those are just good to know. And also in the next page, I was very much impressed with this. So it looks like the backing and where the battery was placed is intentional because you are able to replace the battery if need be. This is awesome. I have not seen anything quite like this. There's a lot of rechargeable battery pumps out there. Definitely. The market has no shortage of those, but allowing easy access to consumers to easily replace it, that is top notch. Love that. So love to see it. That is available if you're using this pump for a really long time and you know the battery just seems to not be working as well. It's as easy as getting a replacement and switching it out. So I love to see that, but there was just a couple of things in here that I wanted to mention. If I can find a PDF online version of this, I will definitely link it because I think it's got a lot of great stuff in there. I do. First things first, I wanted to quickly talk flange size. Like I said earlier, the manual has a great reference in here with pictures and everything. I don't want to show it just because I do not want to get in trouble with YouTube, but it has some great visuals. If you have it, utilize it. It is a great start point, but you want to find something that is not too tight, not too big. Now, of course, that's the guideline. There are people who are outside those guidelines and there's exceptions to the guidelines. It is all about whatever is most comfortable and gives you the most milk. So there will be people who have a super big fit. There's people who like it really tight. However, traditionally, the best flange size is somewhere in the middle. You want to have just a couple millimeters on either side of your nipple between the wall of the flange. That's what you're looking for. So keep that in mind whenever you're sizing these, you want to also size them before you've pumped, not after, because after pumping, you have swelling of your nipple. So we are gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to assemble your pump parts. So I'm just gonna take the one that I unassembled earlier, get all these parts over here, try to make it a little bit cleaner over here. <laughs> And then I'm going to assemble these. So one of the easiest things to start with is this duck bill valve. You just want to push it on the base and just make sure that it's as flush as it can be. And then you can go ahead and screw your bottle on. On here, you're going to take the purple pieces and you can see it's got notches, so it's really easy. And like I said, the manual did a great job of walking you through this as well. Again, you just wanna make sure that it's sitting flush. Obviously the notches are where they belong. Now we go ahead and we put the lid on. So you just put it a little off center at first. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a little off center because that way we're going to twist it and that way it's a little bit more straight on. So that is a look and you would obviously use whatever flange that you have and you just put that right on. And there you go. You've got your pump parts assembled and ready to go. So there is that. I also want to quickly talk about the tubing as well. So this is what the tubing looks like. Obviously, if you wanted to double pump, it's pretty straightforward. This end goes into the pump and then this goes on the back of one of your pump parts. So it would look something like that. And then you've got this T down here that flows into the main tube that goes into the pump. So that's typically how the double pumping goes. Now, if you're single pumping, you can just unattach one of these, pull the tubing off, take this little thing that they have right here and put it right into that hole. However, I'm gonna show you what I did. Is this the right way? Maybe not, but this is what I did. I single pumped through my entire exclusively pumping journey with my youngest. It was just so much better and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So that's what I went with. That's what worked for me. You can try that out if you would like to. I just took all of that off and I've got the single tubing that goes from the pump and this. So this is what I used personally. If you're gonna single pump, this is how I would do it. 
So that's what I did do. That's how I used it. There's no additional tea in there that you can lose suction from that you've got to keep an eye on. This is typically what I like to do. So that's a look at tubing, pretty straightforward. And now we're just going to go over the pump. Okay, so now we're going to talk about pump settings and how to get this started. So I do have it hooked up with the tubing just so that way it's not as noisy. And also with the uh, diaphragm up here, you are able to get a visual representation of frequency, suction, things like that. So you can see that, but I'm going to just be using this. I'm going to be pausing it on and off as I'm talking as well, just so we don't have that background, background noise if it's not necessary. Any background noise of my own, such as screaming children, are just my kids enjoying themselves outside. So please just ignore anything that you hear. They're completely supervised with their dad. They're having a good old time. Anyways, we are going to jump right into starting this pump up. So I'm going to turn it right on. And as you can see, it's starting us off in stimulation mode very low. That's because this pump will remember your settings from last time. So the suction level is going to be wherever you left it. I would recommend keeping it low when you start. Of course, you can always just turn it down whenever you start up the pump, but just that way in case you're already hooked up when you turn it on, it's no problem. You can see the LCD screen dimmed to save power, like I explained earlier from the manual, but it's still timing. Everything's still there, just a little harder to see. And as soon as I press the button right here, it's gonna come right back on. So with suction level, I would recommend that you start low, go high. You do not want pumping to ever be painful. It should never, never be painful. Uncomfortable, maybe, especially in postpartum days, but painful, no, that indicates a problem. So we need to find a good setting that is both comfortable for you to sustain throughout your entire pump session and also effective at drawing out milk. So I'll go ahead and unpause it. We're starting down here. I would sit here for a few seconds, see how that feels. If you feel like you need an increase in suction, we're just gonna slowly increase it, just a little bit by a little bit. Now this pump has some intense suction. I never in my almost, uh, I don't know, two, three years of using Lansano, I never went up to those levels. However, that doesn't mean that you won't. I just want to be careful. I think a lot of people think more suction, more milk. That's not the way it works. Your body is going to give you the most milk when you're the most comfortable. That includes flange size, settings, suction level, the whole nine yards. It doesn't mean that just because you crank it all the way up to the highest levels that you're going to get the most milk. I wish it was that simple, but it really isn't. It's well-intentioned, but I don't want you to hurt yourself. So I'm going to unpause it. And with the stimulation mode, it stays here on a timer. It'll kick you over after so long into expression mode. I'm going to hit the button just to kind of show that. So you can see those drops disappeared. We are now in the expression mode. When it comes to stimulation and expression, what you want to do is stimulation is to start the milk flow. So as soon as you have milk flow, you can change to expression. However, that can take you a little bit. It can take a few minutes to get a letdown. If the timer tries to kick you over into expression and you haven't yet had a letdown, then you can press this button and go right back into stimulation. Nobody makes the rules here. It's just about what's good for your body. So, Knowing that if we're ready to be an expression, it's going to be the same deal. We are going to start low and work our way high. Again, we do not want to be in pain. We want to find something that allows the milk to be expressed and isn't painful. So we've just got to be careful finding that line over here is frequency. I did turn the suction up so I can make sure that you could hear me with this next part because frequency is equally as important as suction is right now we're on the third option. I myself was always on the first one. You can hear how frequent that is. It's just like a touch under the stimulation mode. And for some people like myself, that was great. I needed this high frequency. Then they have the second selection, which is obviously a bit more drawn out. And then they also have this third one, much more drawn out. And like everything else, it is going to be completely individual. I would suggest to start off on this frequency. See what that does for you. 
because chances are this will not be painful. This is not going to cause any kind of irritation with you if it's not working. And then you can slowly increase it. And as far as time goes, you want to pump until you're as close to empty as possible. That isn't a set time as much as it is a feeling of your breasts. Are they soft? Are they squishy? Are you getting just slow rolling beads or no milk at all in the tunnel of the flange? These are the questions that you need to be asking and you need to be looking for. If you can still feel significant hard spots in your breasts, then chances are you're not empty. If you're still getting streams, you're not empty. There is no hard or fast rule when it comes to the time or length of a pump session. However, you do, again, want to be mindful of how long you're spending. Anything over 30 minutes, I think we're entering something is not quite right territory. We need some troubleshooting. It is absolutely no fault of your own. There's just something that needs a little adjusting. So no problem. You can figure that out, whether it be flange size, suction level, frequency, whatever it may be. There are people who empty in seven minutes. There are people who need upwards of 25. There is no rule. So if your girlfriend is just zooming through those pump sessions and can empty her breasts in about five minutes flat, that is great for her. But it might take you 20 some odd minutes. There is nothing wrong with either of you two. All of our breasts are different. If you didn't already know, hands-on pumping can also almost double the output if you're not doing that. That is scientifically proven through studies. Hands-on pumping just means to massage your breast and move the, the breast around as you're pumping. Having a hands-free bra obviously makes that far more easier, but just having that manipulation of your tissue and everything that the milk is being stored in can help it flow easier. Also being relaxed, a quiet setting, things like that that are impossibly hard to find as parents. Those, anything that will relax you, that also increases your milk flow as well. If you are finding yourself, oh, this is miserable, I'm not getting anything, I can't get a let down, the baby's screaming, I'm sweating, all of these things, I recommend a break. I don't care about pump schedules, I care about a sane mama. So take 15, take two hours, occasionally that is not going to be a problem it's not going to hinder your supply take the time that you need to adjust the situation so that everybody's a little bit more calm and i guarantee you'll have a better experience obviously pump schedules are important and consistency is important emptying thoroughly is important when it comes to pumping however you are not going to achieve any of those things if we don't manipulate our schedules from time to time kids require a lot, being a parent is a lot, things are not always going to work in your favor. Sometimes pump times have to be pushed an hour and so be it. You're doing a great job. Everything is not going to tank overnight. Give yourself a breath, take a rest. We'll get the hang of this. I promise you. You can revisit this video as many times as you need and I will keep telling you the same thing. Start low, work high, manipulate your breasts, Give yourself a nice massage. Make sure you've got the right flange size. Make sure you're comfortable. And most importantly, that you're doing an awesome job. You will get there. You will get the hang of this. This is a lot. Parenthood is a lot. But we've got it. It's okay. We'll figure this out. I promise in the long run, it doesn't matter if your kid is breastfed, formula fed. It's going to be okay either way. Okay, you're giving this your best shot. I think you've done a great job looking up this video. I promise you, you're doing better than you think. And I know everyone says that, but it's true. Really hard in the early days postpartum to see that kind of thing, but it is the truth. I can say to you now, as a stay-at-home mom of almost 10 years, my youngest just turned four and my oldest is gonna be nine soon. I'm out of the postpartum days and I promise you, you are doing a world better than you're giving yourself credit for. So I hope this was helpful. If I missed anything or you have additional questions, leave them down in the comments below. If you hung out the entire time, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Why don't we go ahead and put the milk bottle in the comments below so I know that you hung out with me the entire time. Reminder, you're doing great. This will come. We'll figure it out. No problem. You're okay. You're doing great. I promise. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.